My life with him always seemed like a fairy tale. We met by chance at a cafe near my office. I had just finished a tough project. Work had been keeping me stressed, and I decided to allow myself an hour of peace, to enjoy a cup of coffee and a new book. I sat at a table by the window, where the sunlight gently filtered through the blinds, and I felt a sense of calm surround me. That's when he walked in. At first, I didn't pay much attention to him, but he sat down at the table next to mine. After a few moments, our eyes met, and I felt a wave of curiosity wash over me. He approached me, starting a casual conversation, and within minutes, we were laughing as if we had known each other for years. That meeting was the beginning. We started seeing each other regularly, and every time we met, it felt special. He always showed up with flowers or a small gift. At first, it was simple things, a chocolate bar I had mentioned offhand, or a bracelet similar to one I had lost in childhood. Each gift seemed to show how attentively he listened, how well he remembered every little detail of my life. When we moved in together, I fully immersed myself in our domestic life. He created the impression that everything was ours, that we were a team. I quit my job, although it felt like a sudden decision for myself. He was against me continuing to work, insisting that he could provide for us both. I didn't agree immediately, but he was so convincing that I relented. Why would you need to work when I can give you everything? His words made me feel special, important. He emphasized, I like knowing you're at home, taking care of our life. And despite my initial desire to remain independent, I agreed. Life turned into a romantic movie scenario. We traveled together, attended social events, and were invited into circles I had only heard of before. He continued showering me with luxurious gifts. From designer dresses to expensive jewelry, it all seemed like a manifestation of his endless love. But the more gifts I received, the more I began to feel a strange mix of emotions. One incident stands out vividly in my memory. It was our third wedding anniversary. He had arranged a lavish dinner at one of the city's finest restaurants. I wore a dress he had bought me especially for the occasion, a soft blue silk gown that flowed to the floor. I felt like a movie star on a red carpet. He gazed at me with admiration, pouring out compliments, and I was convinced this would be another day confirming our perfect relationship. During dinner, he presented me with yet another gift, a diamond necklace. I was stunned by its luxury and cost. He smiled and said, You're worth it. At that moment, it seemed like nothing could be better. But somewhere, on the edge of my consciousness, there was a small flicker of unease, though I couldn't understand why. We returned home late that night, and as I was about to go to bed, he suddenly said, You should be grateful for all of this. I found it strange and asked, Of course, I'm grateful. But why are you saying this now? His answer was simple, but left a deep mark on my soul. Because it's all my money. Those words froze in my mind like cold rain, suddenly washing away the feeling of perfection in our life. I remembered all his gifts, all the things he had surrounded me with. They no longer seemed as romantic or selfless as they once had. Now, each one of them was tightly bound to that phrase. It was like a cold shower waking me up from the dream of an ideal life. After that night, I began to notice changes in our dynamic. At first, it was little things that I tried to ignore. If he used to give me freedom in my choices, now he began to control all my actions. If I wanted to buy something on my own, he always had to know about it. When I expressed a desire to purchase something for myself, new shoes, cosmetics, or even just household items, he would always ask, why do you need this? Don't you already have everything you need? At first, I took it as a sign of care. I thought he was just trying to ensure that we didn't spend money recklessly. But over time, it became something more. His questions became more persistent, then turned into direct orders. You don't need this. I don't think you should buy that. One time, when I bought new shoes without his permission, he got angry. We were sitting at dinner, and he suddenly asked, are those new shoes? You didn't say you were going to buy something. I felt my stomach twist with anxiety. It was the first time I felt guilty for doing something for myself. 
I didn't think it would be a problem. I responded hesitantly. His expression changed. It's not your money to decide how to spend, he said coldly. That phrase hit me like a slap. I had never felt so dependent before. I always believed our money was a shared resource. But those words struck at the very core of me. After that, I started noticing how his control over my life became tighter. He began checking our bank statements, monitoring every purchase I made, even if it was just a coffee with a friend. If I wanted to go somewhere without him, he always asked why, why I couldn't just stay at home. The worst part was that I started feeling like I was losing myself. Every time I did something for myself, I felt guilty. Even when I bought something simple, it felt like I was betraying his trust. I became scared to make even the smallest decisions because I feared his reaction. One incident forced me to seriously reflect on what was happening. I wanted to buy a gift for my mother's birthday, a set of cosmetics she had wanted for a long time. But when I asked him if I could spend a little money on it, he replied, Why should you spend my money on that? Your mother doesn't need it. I was shocked by his response. It was a gift for my mother. But at that moment, I realized that, in his eyes, everything belonged only to him. He didn't see me as an equal partner, but as part of his success, something he owned. This moment was a turning point. I started reading about financial control and abusive relationships, trying to understand what was happening to me. Every article, every story of women who had gone through similar things echoed my own situation. But admitting it was hard. I felt trapped. How could I leave him when I had nothing? He controlled everything, the money, the house, even my thoughts. After that incident with my mother's gift, I couldn't find peace. Something inside me had shattered. I began questioning how I had ended up in a relationship where the man I loved, who I once saw as my partner, had turned into someone who constantly restricted and controlled my life. With each passing day, I realized more and more that this wasn't just small misunderstandings or temporary difficulties. It was a trap, and escaping it was becoming more challenging. One morning, I decided to do what I had feared for a long time. I woke up earlier than him and quietly went into the living room. There, in the silence, I took out my phone and began searching for information. I knew it was risky. He would never have allowed me to read articles about financial abuse, as that would mean acknowledging problems in our relationship. But at that moment, I could no longer ignore the truth. When I started reading real stories of other women who had gone through similar situations, my heart filled with fear and pain for myself. I saw how financial control slowly destroyed others' lives, how they lost their self-respect, faith in themselves, and even their independence. It was like reading about my own life, and I felt a mix of emotions, fear, shame, but also hope. I realized I couldn't continue living this way. My soul began to scream that it was time for change, that I couldn't keep living under someone else's control. But the biggest fear was that I didn't know how to escape. As a woman who hadn't worked for many years and was completely dependent on her husband, how could I find a way out? That day, I decided to talk to him. Not immediately, but when I finally gathered my thoughts, I was ready to start the conversation one evening after dinner. We need to talk. I began, my voice trembling. About what? He replied calmly, not suspecting that something serious was coming. I've been unhappy lately. These words spilled from my mouth, and I felt a wave of anxiety grow inside me. I can't continue living like this. His face changed. He set his wine glass down on the table and looked at me with cold attention. What are you talking about? You have everything you could want. You live in comfort. You don't have to do anything. Why are you unhappy? Because I don't feel free, I admitted. You control everything, even what I wear and what I buy. You always remind me that it's your money, that I have to ask permission for every step. This doesn't feel like love anymore. I feel like I've lost my own life. These words left him stunned. He was silent for a few seconds. Then his face took on a familiar expression, cold detachment. This is all in your head. You don't understand how things work. You should be grateful for everything I do for us. His voice was firm. 
I work hard so we can live like this. Without me, you'd have nothing. His words were like a slap in the face. I knew he thought that way, but hearing it out loud was painful. His gaze and tone immediately showed that he wasn't going to understand me. In his mind, I was just his property, part of his success, not an equal partner. That conversation ended with me leaving him sitting in the room while I went to the bedroom, where I lay awake for a long time. I knew my life had to change, but I still didn't understand how to make that happen. I felt trapped, like a bird in a cage, seeing the sky, but unable to fly. The following weeks were hard. I began planning every step, exploring options to regain my independence. At first, I decided to reconnect with former colleagues. It wasn't easy since most of them had continued building their careers while I had spent years at home. I felt awkward and even ashamed that I had been inactive for so long. But I had no other choice. I had to do something. One of my colleagues, with whom I had maintained a good relationship, supported me. She said there were a few job openings where they were looking for experienced workers and that I could definitely try to re-enter the profession. This conversation was like a ray of light in the darkness. I began preparing my resume, rereading old notes, trying to remember all the skills I once had. It was a difficult process. Every day, as I sat at the computer, working to rebuild my knowledge, I struggled with doubts. I wasn't confident in myself, afraid that I wouldn't be able to find a job again. But at the same time, I understood that this was my only chance. One day, while he was at work, I submitted my resume to several companies. My heart was pounding, but at the same time, I felt some relief. It was my first step toward freedom. Although I didn't yet know how it would all end, there was a glimmer of hope inside me. Eventually, I received my first responses. Small companies were interested in my experience, and I was offered a few interviews. It was a real breakthrough. I could no longer delay the decision. My path to independence began with small but crucial steps. The day I received a job offer, I decided that I would no longer live in the shadow of his control. That evening, when he returned home, I packed my things and calmly told him that I would no longer be dependent on him. His reaction was expected. At first, he was furious. Then he tried to convince me that I was making a huge mistake. But I wasn't listening to him anymore. I would no longer allow myself to be the weak woman dependent on someone else's decisions. That night was the last time I stayed in that house. I walked out, feeling both fear and immense relief. Now my life was my own. I didn't know what awaited me, but I knew one thing. I would never let anyone control me again. My journey to freedom had been long and difficult, but I managed to reclaim my sense of self, my freedom, and my independence. And though the path was painful, it made me stronger, taught me to cherish every moment of liberty, and to believe in myself. She thought she had married the love of her life. Everything seemed perfect until his mother stepped into the picture. From the very beginning, his mother never truly accepted her. There were subtle glances, disapproving sighs, and polite smiles that never reached her eyes. The young wife had hoped that time would soften the edges of their relationship, but instead, things only got worse. It started with small, seemingly harmless comments. Oh, you cook so differently than what he's used to. I always made his meals a certain way. Or, it's so sweet how you take care of him. But I've been doing it for years, you'll learn. The young wife tried to brush these remarks off, chalking them up to the protective nature of a mother. But the comments never stopped. They only grew sharper. Soon, the tension in their home became impossible to ignore. His mother started visiting more frequently, offering advice on how they should manage their household. You shouldn't spend so much on those things, she would say, eyeing the shopping bags the wife brought home. Save that money for the future. What if something happens to me? Your husband is all I have. The young wife noticed how her husband's demeanor would change in his mother's presence. He would tense up, try to please both women, and avoid confrontation at all costs. He never openly defended his wife when his mother made veiled criticisms, 
which left the young woman feeling isolated and increasingly frustrated. She loved her husband deeply, but his loyalty to his mother began to feel like a third presence in their marriage, and not a welcome one. Then, his mother began to play on his emotions more directly. She started calling frequently, claiming she was feeling unwell. My heart's been bothering me again, she'd sigh into the phone. But don't worry, I don't want to be a burden. Every time, her husband would rush over, leaving the wife alone, her evening plans abandoned. At first, she was understanding. After all, his mother was aging and health issues were part of life. But over time, the pattern became clear. His mother would suddenly feel ill whenever the couple had plans or if the wife suggested they take a trip or spend time together without her. One evening, the young couple had planned a romantic dinner to celebrate their anniversary. Everything was perfect, the restaurant, the ambience, the gifts. But just as they were about to leave, his mother called, her voice weak and trembling. I don't know if I'll make it through the night, she whispered. Her husband's face paled. I need to go to her, he said, grabbing his jacket. The wife tried to hide her disappointment, but it stung deeply. That night, she spent their anniversary alone at the table, picking at the food she had cooked while the candles flickered out one by one. Over time, his mother's illnesses became more frequent. There was always something wrong. Her heart, her back, her head. She would play the victim so skillfully that the young wife began to doubt herself. Was she being selfish by wanting time alone with her husband? Was it wrong to feel resentful of his mother's needs? She struggled with these questions every day, trying to be the understanding wife, but her patience was wearing thin. Money became another battleground. His mother began asking for financial help, claiming that her medical bills were piling up and she couldn't afford them. You don't want me to go into debt, do you? She would ask her son, her voice dripping with guilt. It's just for my health. You wouldn't let your mother suffer, would you? He, of course, obliged, transferring money to her without a second thought. But his wife noticed that the medical bills never seemed to end, and every time they started saving for something of their own, like a home renovation or a vacation, his mother would need more. The wife tried to bring up her concerns, but every time she did, it ended in an argument. She's my mother, he would say, his voice strained. What am I supposed to do? Ignore her? He didn't understand how manipulated his wife felt, how his mother's constant needs were draining their relationship and their finances. The more the young wife tried to communicate, the more distant he became, as if defending his mother was the only option he could see. The tension in their home grew unbearable. His mother's constant presence, both physically and emotionally, cast a long shadow over their marriage. The young wife felt as though she was fighting a battle she could never win, because no matter what she did, his mother would always come first. And the worst part was her husband couldn't or wouldn't see it. The months passed, and the young wife's resentment deepened. She began to feel trapped in a cycle she couldn't escape. Whenever they planned something for themselves, his mother would have an episode, whether it was a sudden dizzy spell or a flare-up of some mysterious ailment that never seemed to be diagnosed properly. It always happened at the most inconvenient times, and every time, her husband would drop everything to rush to her side. The wife started noticing patterns in his mother's behavior. Whenever she mentioned something important, like a work presentation or a big event, his mother's health would decline dramatically. I just don't know how much longer I have, she would say, her voice filled with melancholy. I wish I could see you more, but I know you have your life now. Her husband, caught between guilt and love, couldn't refuse her. He was a dutiful son, but his loyalty to his mother began to erode the foundation of his marriage. The wife felt like she was in a competition for his attention, and no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't win. Every time they had something to look forward to, his mother's illness would cast a dark cloud over their plans. One weekend, they had planned a getaway to the countryside, a much-needed escape from the stress of daily life. The wife had been looking forward to it for weeks, dreaming of quiet mornings and peaceful walks by the lake. But the night before they were supposed to leave, his mother called. I don't feel well, she said, her voice faint. 
I don't think I can make it through the night alone. Her husband looked torn, but the guilt in his eyes was unmistakable. I can't leave her like this, he said. She needs me. The wife's heart sank. Once again, their plans were canceled, and once again, she was left alone to deal with the disappointment. She couldn't help but wonder if his mother was doing it on purpose, creating crises to keep them apart, to keep her son close to her. But how could she accuse an elderly woman of such manipulation without looking heartless? The next morning, his mother seemed perfectly fine. She was up and about cheerful and full of energy. The wife couldn't believe it. Had it all been an act? Was his mother really sick? Or was she just pretending to keep her son at her side? The young wife felt anger bubble up inside her, but she bit her tongue, knowing that if she voiced her suspicions, it would only lead to another argument. But the financial strain was becoming harder to ignore. Every time they tried to save for something, his mother would have another emergency. A doctor's appointment, a medical test, a procedure. There was always something. The wife began to suspect that his mother wasn't being entirely truthful about her expenses. One day, while her husband was at work, she decided to investigate. She went through the bills his mother had left lying around, carefully reading through the charges. To her shock, she found receipts for expensive items, clothes, jewelry, and spa treatments that had nothing to do with medical care. The wife's hands trembled as she realized what was happening. His mother was using the money for herself, not for the medical expenses she had claimed. She felt a mixture of anger and betrayal, but also a deep sadness. How could his mother do this to them? And how could her husband not see it? That evening, she confronted her husband with the evidence. She showed him the receipts, laid out the facts, and waited for him to react. But instead of anger or disbelief, his response was one of shock and confusion. She wouldn't do that, he said, shaking his head. She must have a reason. Maybe the bills are wrong. The wife couldn't believe what she was hearing. Even with the proof in front of him, he refused to see the truth. His loyalty to his mother was so strong that he couldn't accept the idea that she might be lying to him. The wife realized then that this battle was bigger than she had thought. His mother wasn't just manipulating him. She had a hold on him that went deeper than love or duty. It was control. As time went on, the young wife became more and more isolated. She felt like a stranger in her own home, watching from the sidelines as her husband catered to his mother's every whim. She tried to talk to him, tried to make him see how his mother's manipulation was tearing them apart, but every conversation ended the same way. With him defending his mother and dismissing his wife's concerns as paranoia or jealousy. But then something unexpected happened. One afternoon, while her husband was at work, the wife received a call from a family friend. I'm sorry to hear about your mother in law's health, the friend said sympathetically. It must be hard for her going through all those treatments. The wife froze. Treatments? What treatments? I saw her at the spa last week, the friend continued. She didn't mention anything about being sick. The wife's heart raced. She knew his mother had been lying, but this confirmed it. She wasn't sick at all. She was using her son's money and their sympathy to maintain a lifestyle of luxury while pretending to be ill. It was the ultimate betrayal. That evening, when her husband came home, the wife confronted him again, this time with the truth she had discovered. She told him about the friend's phone call about the spa visits, and about all the lies his mother had been telling. She could see the confusion and pain in his eyes as he listened. But this time, something had changed. He didn't immediately rush to his mother's defense. He didn't brush off his wife's concerns. Instead, he sat in silence, processing everything. For the first time, he began to see the cracks in the story his mother had been weaving for years. The next day, he confronted his mother. The conversation was long and emotional, filled with accusations, denials, and painful truths. His mother, caught off guard, finally admitted that she had exaggerated her illnesses and financial needs. I just didn't want to lose you, she said tearfully. I was afraid that if I let go, you'd forget about me. Her son, heartbroken, realized the depth of his mother's manipulation. 
He had spent years trying to be the perfect son, sacrificing his marriage in the process. He had allowed his mother to control his life, to come between him and his wife. And now, the consequences were clear. When he returned home, he found his wife waiting for him. She looked at him, her eyes filled with sadness, but also hope. He took her hand and whispered, I'm so sorry. I see it now. From that moment on, they began to rebuild their marriage, free from the shadow of his mother's manipulation. It wasn't easy. The wounds ran deep, but they were determined to find their way back to each other. His mother, realizing the damage she had caused, slowly distanced herself, no longer able to play the victim. In the end, their love prevailed, stronger and more resilient than before. The young wife had fought for her place in her husband's life, and finally, she had won.